a teapot like I made a teapot nice and cheap and easy and affordable and hopefully helpful <laughs> then watch this video do it do it now ah I'm gonna do the best I can to help you learn how to make a teapot and that is a rock fact buckle in and hopefully this makes sense what do you think Jason Jason do you think do you think this will work you think they'll learn how to make a teapot you think they'll get it? You think they'll understand us? You think you got it? You think you'll do it? <laughs> so material wise, it's very simple to make this teapot. You literally just need paper. I just have a big old piece from the Dollar Tree, 50 cents for this nice old big piece of poster board. I have a reference. Not that, I mean, I have my teapot as well that I actually made, so I'll use that as well. Um, but I have a reference. Ooh. We're gonna try and make it look as close as we can, but also um, I like to keep this just because when I made mine, I, I do shit really cartoony if you hadn't noticed. I really like adding in those like details. So like the like shading on his teapot is something I paid attention to. So we will get into that later. Some silver or chrome spray paint. Whenever I see this, I always just think of like that episode of Spongebob. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where like everything is chrome and it's the future? It's like old school Spongebob. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you know what I'm talking about, but it like really freaked me out as a kid. I was really tripped out by that because like a flower pops out of the ground and somebody like runs up and sprays it with chrome and like, I don't know. Anyways, that is what you need. And that was like, I want to say like three dollars at Walmart. Um, if you are under 18, I think it's under 18. Is it 16 or 18? I have no idea. There's so many ages for things like alcohol and cigarettes and spray paint. Why does why? What I guess I don't know. Whatever. But you, I think you need to be like 18 or older to get spray paint. So I have an idea with you. I, they just want to make sure you're not like graffitiing the city. I know that's a big deal in St. Louis. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know about anywhere else, but it's a big deal in St. Louis. So check that out. Um, it's, it was like $3. So, you know, just explain to your parents. You're like, I want to be Greg from Red Garden Wall. And hopefully they like, that's an innocent endeavor. Have some spray paint. Scissors to cut your shit and things. Well, Fabri-Tac as always. Um, but I'm sure you could just use hot glue or anything. Again, I just like Fabri-Tac. It dries the quickest for me. And I always have had issues with giving myself third degree burns whenever I use hot glue. So that is also why I use Fabri-Tac. This is actually the cheap knockoff Fabri-Fix from Hobby Lobby because I think I bought every bottle of Fabri-Tac in the St. Louis metropolitan area. So I had to get the knockoff from my local Michaels. I went to get some and it was totally empty and there was no little ones either. So I was like, damn, damn. Looking at my life choices, looking at that empty shelf in Michaels like, this, I have a problem, but I'm okay with that. Alrighty, cool. And now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty. Obviously the shading of the teapot and all of that is going to be something that we worry about later, um, but it, that's just literally acrylic paint and it literally takes five seconds to do and I think adds a lot to it, for me at least. Like I really like it um, with that added detail. So we'll get into that later first and foremost you're gonna want to cut a strip that looks to be let's see this is about i'd say to here so what that's again i'm sorry but i like literally eyeball my entire life so i never really have measurements for things i don't even think i own a ruler which is probably a problem as a cosplayer but I'm not worried about it. It's fine. So just kind of see like how, I mean, again, that's your choice, how big or small you want your teapot to be. And the main deal is making sure that this fits your head. I have a pretty small head. So, you know, I was trying to make it kind of snug, but not too snug that it's uncomfortable. So I did about to here. So let's see, that's like a good amount, you know, going off this teapot here. Alrighty, and then next, you're gonna wanna fit it around your head. 
and see if that works. So, ah, it's a little bit bigger than I want it to be. So I'm gonna cut off this another like. Ah! So I'm gonna cut off about like this much. See that? And I'm actually gonna keep that piece because it's gonna be important in a bit, and I'll show you that. Try this again. It's snug enough that it's gonna sit, but not so snug that it's gonna be uncomfortable. Glue it down. Uh, just glue in there real quick. Glue that shit down. This is what I'm talking about, Fabri-Tac. I just have to like sit and hold it for about like two minutes. <laughs> To make yourself feel better and make it feel like the process is going faster. So just push it and go and it's great and it helps. Do it all the time. <laughs> what? Um, see it? That's a little uneven, so. Boop! I'm not worried about it. So you should have about this. Woo! Yay! Cool! Oh, and for me, I have like this excess paper in here from where I glued it. It's just the extra. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. As like added detail to make it look even more like a teapot, I'm gonna like do this groove in here. And be sure to do that groove on a side where like this isn't connecting it together because you don't wanna accidentally like cut this off and then it's just gonna fall apart, obviously. That, that would be a logical thing that happens, you know. Make it round, basically just cut into it like so. So there's the one side, and it's gonna help to like fit your head a little bit better too. Just go ahead and do that on both sides. And then what I would do from there, you can either leave it like that, or you can do this, which I think looks cuter. It's just a personal preference, but I save these pieces, and then I'm gonna stick them in here, but just like stagger them a little bit like that. Just to like, I don't know why, but I just think it looks good. I have no idea why. I don't know. Just another one of my life choices that I just have made. Shit is good. Next step. Remember this piece that I cut off that was a little bit extra? Oh no, I bent it a little bit. That's fine. Um, <laughs> that was a little bit extra. That is going to be this inside piece that connects the top to the teapot. So this circle to this bit here, it's like, creates more of a like actual teapot edge. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So again, this is gonna go at the top. So the opposite end of this, this is gonna go on your head. This is gonna go at the top. And let me cut this extra. You should have something like this. So let me glue this. That fits just in there, just perfectly. Hold it. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the inside rim of this, but you can also start by gluing that as well, but whatever, it doesn't matter. One of these needs to get stuck to the other. So whether it's that piece of paper you just glued or the inside of here, something needs to be adhered so that that will stick into here. Boop, and this goes inside. Boop, doo -doo 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 -doo. It looks like a tiny trash can for your soul. So let that dry as much as you can. And if you see this, I've pushed it in. The way you're gonna get this to look the best, like going down like that, is you're gonna have to make little inserts, little cut out little pieces of this so that you can fold it down properly. Five, six, six, about six in there. So they are, yeah, see that? Just so it can be easier to like fold it in to make it look circular. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more before I try folding it in like that. And we're gonna do the top. Measuring out this, I would set this down on your paper. And looking at it, I would do, so like you set it down on your paper and see, you're gonna wanna make it like, leave at least like an inch room, like an inches room to like have a big, beautiful top. However you want, how big you want that teapot top to be. You go for it and follow your dreams, honey. You do you. That's what you do. Cut out your circle. We've cut out our top. What I'm gonna do, so I did all these little 
things in here and this is like the part where I think people are like, what? Crumbling the paper that you so lovingly crafted, but that's a part, that's a huge part of the entire paper crafting process is don't be afraid of your paper. Get all up in that and crimp it like that. Like, especially the poster board, it's very resilient. You can do a lot to it before it will like really kind of start to disintegrate. See, so it gives it more of like a teapot rounded top. Kind of eye it up and see where you're at, what things are looking like. See, look, it looks pretty rounded like that. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So, I'm gonna glue the top of this. Nailed it. Looking good, looking fierce. So you should have this. Look at this. Yes. Yes, God. Yes, Mama. And then from here, it's just super, super easy. Uh, so basically, all the details that are left are the handle and the spout. So we'll do those really quick, which is very simple. Just like look at your source material to the best of your ability and be like, hey, how do I do that? How do I want it to look? Uh, -da -da -da. You have all the options in the world. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna look at my stuff. I'm gonna make some handles and I'm gonna make some spouts. I made a little side spout. Spout what? Handle. Made a little handle. Cut that shit out. And I made it a little bit longer than I think I want it. So I made it just a little bit like longer ways, like this way. So like these bits are a little bit extra. So I want it to be about this big. And then I made it like just a little tiny bit, like half an inch extra. And so I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna trace it and make another one that's the same exact size. Now you're left with these, these two. What you're gonna do with these two, you're gonna stick them on your teapot, but you're gonna do this so that you can glue them down. I did a little bit of a poor job with that one. I'm gonna trim it so it matches that one a little bit better. There we go. Cool beans, look at that shit. I'm gonna glue them together and on the ends so you're gonna stick them on match it up to like where you have that little inseam and with the fabric tack I can even if it's like not perfectly aligned I can just do like burp, just hold it ah! <laughs> come back come back get on my head let's do it and just hold it hold it down let's do it come on there we go so there's that little cute little stinker. Oh no! Oh no! I put it on upside down! Fuck! <laughs> it's still dry enough, I can switch it pretty easily. Oh, god damn it. I forget it's upside down. Mother trucker. There we go. <laughs> that is also nice about Forever Attack. It's very forgiving in those first moments. Oh, I actually made this actually a little bit more accurate. Looks just a little bit more canon than this handle. That's what happens when you remake things. Cool. Look at that shit. That's so cute. Alrighty. That. And then now all we have left is the spout. Okay, so same exact way that this was done. We're gonna do the spout. Mm, but just a little bit differently. So let's do that. I'm gonna cut out a spout. And for the spout, I'll show you. You're gonna wanna leave it a little bit round on the bottom. So leave a little bit of a rounded edge on this one. Boop. Then cut out another one. Trace and cut out another one. Two spouts, look at that shit. All right, so now we got these. I'm not gonna do this backwards. So before you even touch it with glue or anything, you're gonna like wanna mold, like put your finger in it and like mold it around your finger. So that you get like a nice, see? And that looks, you know, that gives you that like fake roundness psychs you out so you're left with something like that so when it fits together it's like that and before you glue it down you're gonna want to glue these edges so this is how i do everything you guys patience and willpower i sit with that glue and i hold it together until it dries and fabric is gonna get all over your fingers and feel like sticky snot. So that's also why I like using Fabri-Tac as opposed to hot glue, but hot glue is an option. I think you just have to take it slow around the edges, just like a little bit at a time instead of just mashing it all together like a monster like I do. Just kind of like boop, 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 boop along the edges like a fiend. 
Let that dry just a little bit, and then you're gonna glue that down. Line it up, looking good. See where this is about at on there. Stick it on. A lot of it is just not being afraid to like mess up. Well, this one, maybe I did a little bit too small of a spout. But what I'm gonna do, I think, to get it to look right, really just feel it out. You just feel out the paper. Talk to the paper, see what it wants. Be like, hey buddy, what are you, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Should have left these a little bit bigger. Instead of cutting them to the exact size, I should have left more room around it because the top has left me with like this open space. So I'm just gonna get another piece of paper, a really tiny piece of paper, and just put that over it. Uh-oh, I followed your footsteps and you fucked me up and I'll be like, I'm sorry, yeah! <laughs> Just get more, you know, when in doubt, just add more paper. It's not gonna hurt, I promise. So I'm just gonna do this. Stick that in that empty spot. Boop, that's my hole I'm trying to cover. Well, obviously it's paper, it's very forgiving in the way that if you mess this up, it's very easy to fix whatever you've done. Just usually add more paper, rip something off, remake it. It's, you know, it's very forgiving. You're not working with expensive materials, so that's also really why I love paper. There's no fucking pressure. You're just like, Boop! here it is. What you see is what you get, you know? And I really like to do that with props because my paper props I can bring to conventions and there's never any issue with them taking my weapons or being like, you know, this is unsafe to have in a convention environment or whatever. Like, it's always, always good. So yeah, and I've covered up my spot, so I'm satisfied with that, just so you don't have to see into my dark cavern as secret. So that is there, that's cute. It's even more three-dimensional, I think, than this one actually does that I'm wearing. Very cute. And obviously you can make a lot of choices. This one seems a little bit taller, a little bit, a little bit more canon, the way things are shaped. The other one I think I took some liberties. But I'm gonna go spray paint this and I'll be back. Spray the shit out of it. So I'll be back when that is done. All right, here we are, fam. It is painted and, sp well, it is spray painted. Hey, Luna, what's that? So I'm gonna do the best part, which is the funnest part, which is the details, the deets, the deets, as they say. So we got a nice, beautiful chrome finish on this beauty. And you really only need black and white paint. That'll make your life real easy. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with acrylic paint, it's my favorite medium. It's just really easy to use. The best advice I can give you on that is um, the only thing it really doesn't work on is like rubbery textures or like shoes. And if you're gonna use acrylic paint, you worry about it chipping. Get like an enamel or a polyurethane finish from Walmart and just spray over it, and it's not gonna go anywhere. But for paper, especially, you never, you don't have to worry about it. Once you put it on there, it's on there, and it also stains clothes. So that's real life. This is acrylic paint that I used on here. Start out. I'm just gonna do a lot of mixing to make sure things look good and proper and right. So I'm gonna start out doing some shadows in this crease. And those little details that you add to this are gonna go a long way. So I don't really want to use a direct black on it. So I'm gonna mix my black and my white, like a dark gray, and go in there in that crease. And just do that. And that's gonna add a lot to your details. It's gonna make it look just that extra bit finished, I think. And it's my favorite part. It's really what got me into cosplay in the first place was the painting aspect of it. And like the detail, the like, those, those finishing touches are my favorite. So really when I'm cosplaying and I'm making a new cosplay, like I get so stoked about the moment that I get to start doing detail work. Cause that's my shit, that's what I'm all about. Feeling good in the hood, man. This time we do it. And you can paint it however you want. It is just up to you. These are just, I guess, how I did mine and how I like mine, I guess. Um, and you can pick and choose what you think looks good and what you think will look best. But I just like with makeup, blend the shit out of what you put down. If you put down a dark, dark, Black, just blend. As long as your paint is wet, you're good. Just get in there, add more, don't worry about fucking up. 
Um, I think that's my best advice I can give to any artist of any kind, whether you're drawing, you're painting, or whatever, creating things out of paper, you're gonna fuck up and it's gonna be amazing and just go with it. Uh, see, I don't know, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like I'm in the camera while I'm working on shit. It makes it a little bit more high pressure. But if that's what you guys wanna see, I will work on doing more stuff like this. We'll do the side bit here. So let's mix some black and white again, get a nice gray. So let's see, if my teapot is sitting like this and just looking at my reference photo, I'm like, mm, okay. So he's got some shadows here on the teapot handle, right here and right here. Do those on the other side too. Do my shadows. Okay. There's some shadows. And then there's some shadows up here. Some shadows there. Some shadows here. Shadows everywhere. Um, and then he's got some highlight. There's some, oh, okay. There's another shadow. On here as well, going up. Do that one. And this is entirely just looking at reference photos of Greg. Or you can use this video and figure it out from there, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. And then the teapot itself, it has shadows. So these are the ones that look the best I find. What's on the actual teapot itself? Big one, big like rectangular one here. And I'll do that on this side as well, so I can, depending on the day, decide which way I want to wear my teapot. And also, I have options in case I don't like how it looks on one side. I can do the other. Alrighty, and now those, oh, and I did a detail too, which I feel like you never really get to see the top of Greg's hat, but I made up that he's got like, there's like some, some swirling going on here. So, it adds some nice depth, I think, to your teapot to have that. So that's the one side. Now we're gonna do our highlights. We're just a point of so we'll start, I'm going to add some on the handle because why not? I don't see any in the photos on the handle, but I just like my highlights and my lowlights everywhere. Complete the Greg Yang Yang, if you will, and the big old square. that to make it look like I've been traipsing through the woods make it not look so new just little bits here and there oh yeah there it is there it is you guys oh I really like how this one turned out well that's my tutorial and I really hope you guys enjoyed it I hope it helps you make your Greg teapots if nothing else you learned maybe a little bit about how much of my time is spent holding things together while they finish gluing and adhering together um, I hope you guys liked it at the very least. I hope you learned maybe something that might help you down the road with the cosplay you're working on, whether it's Greg or not, and just gave you maybe some ideas about what kind of shit and things you can do with paper because the possibilities are endless, y'all. The possibilities are endless. Just so you know, that's an extra teapot for me, so I don't really need it. So I will be selling it on my store Envy. Uh, the link will be in the description below. You can purchase it there. I'm gonna probably price it about like $20. So 25 plus shipping. So it'll be $25 if you're interested in buying my teapot. So yeah, here you go. If you'd like to purchase this teapot, go and buy it on my store Envy. You just saw me make it here, so that's kind of cool. But so you, you know what went into it. So you would be paying for my 
paint job and my time. And that's a rock fact. And you have a beautiful butt slapping day, you guys. Have fun cosplaying and all your other life endeavors. <laughs>